Hello and welcome to this video on using the new Band in a Box for Windows DAW plugin, specifically using it in Cakewalk by BandLab. With Band in a Box for Windows, we've introduced a plugin version of Band in a Box that accesses all of the real tracks, real drums, and other content in Band in a Box, but can be used right inside your favorite DAW without having to open the actual Band in a Box application. The plugin comes free with the purchase of Band in a Box, and the plugin installs when you install the main program. In this video, we're going to have a look at the various ways you can use this amazing plugin in Cakewalk. If you use a different DAW, we have other videos that demonstrate it in many other DAWs, such as Reaper, Pro Tools, Cubase, Studio One, and many more. In this video, we'll first look at a quick and easy way to get started using the plugin. We'll also go through some of the technical aspects, such as the installation, locations of the plugin on your computer, and some settings within the plugin. Then we'll look at different ways you can use the plugin, including adding Band in a Box tracks to an existing project you're working on. And throughout the video, I'm going to try and use a variety of different Band in a Box styles, so you'll get a sense of some of the different genres, grooves, and tempos we cover. Whether you're into jazz, rock, country, R&B, or any styles you can think of, there's something for you in Band in a Box. So what we're listening to right now are some great funk tracks playing in Cakewalk that we created with the plugin. Everything that you're hearing right now in Cakewalk was created by the Band in a Box plugin simply by typing in these chords, and you can enter any chords in any key, then we picked this funk style and generated the tracks. I'm going to go back in time a little bit to show you just how we got these great sounding tracks. So here we are with a blank Cakewalk project. Cakewalk does have templates you can start with, but I wanted to just start with a completely blank project. There aren't even any tracks or anything here yet. The Band in a Box plugin is an instrument plugin, so I'll right click in the blank area where the tracks go and insert instrument. And I'll pick Band in a Box DAW VST3 plugin. So this is the Band in a Box plugin. It's sizable, so I'll make it bigger. And now we have a blank chord chart. This area here is for the different instruments in the style, and is currently blank because we don't have a style loaded yet. Here's where you can pick a style. Here you can set various musical elements, such as the key, time signature, etc. And there's a spot for a song title and various menus we'll look at later. What we basically need to do in order to get some tracks is pick a style and enter some chords, not necessarily in that order. So I'll enter a chord progression first. I'll do it in the key of F, and I'll start entering some chords. F7 at bar 1, and I'll leave that for 4 bars. Maybe A flat 7 sus at bar 5, and B flat 7 at bar 7. I'll use a handy shortcut K8 to copy the last 8 bars. I'll also add a part marker at bar 9 to fill out the form, and that means that the drums will play a fill in the bar right before that part marker. At bar 17 I'll add a part marker as well, but I'll click a second time to make it a B part marker, which means the drums will change what they're playing at that part. And I'll enter G minor, then C minor at bar 19, C7 at bar 23. I think that's good. I'll change some of the elements up here. I'll make the end bar 24, but I'll actually end on an F chord. And I'll change choruses to four, so this entire thing will repeat four times. So now we can select a style, either by clicking in the Select a Style area, or by going to the Select menu and picking Select a Style. So here is the list of all the Band in a Box styles available, and you can see there's over 6,000 to choose from. And in this list, you can just double click on any style in the list to hear a sample of what it will sound like. So for example, if I filtered the list to show jazz styles, I could sample some of them. Or some rock styles. Or 
for some country styles. But I think the progression I entered would be very well suited to some funk styles. So I'll filter by that. I'll sample a variety of some funk styles. And I love this lash out style. You'll notice that in this column it shows the ideal tempo of the style, which for this one is 110 beats per minute. That does not mean you have to use it at that tempo, but if it's somewhat close to that, you'll get the best results. So I'll pick that style. And I'll pick a tempo, maybe a tiny bit faster than that sample we heard in the style picker, uh, 114 beats per minute. And I'll set that in the plugin as well. When you first add the plugin, it takes the tempo from the DAW, but since we just changed it in the DAW, I need to change it in the plugin as well. So now we're ready to generate the parts. And there are some custom generation options in this menu, but right now I just want all the tracks generated normally, so I'll press the top Generate button. So it's now creating the tracks. You'll notice that right now there are some green squares and a blue square in this area, and those squares are empty. When the tracks are ready, those squares will be filled in. The generation does take a little bit of time. It depends on how many tracks there are and how long the parts are. So we'll skip ahead in the video a little bit. So now it's finished and these squares are now filled in with waveform icons, meaning they're ready to drag into the DAW. Before we do that, we can sample these tracks by pressing play up here. and we can now drag them into the DAW, which can be done individually or as a group. Here I'll show you just dragging in the bass by itself. But I'll undo that so I can show you importing them as a group by dragging the blue icon. And now we have these tracks right in our DAW. And during playback, the chord chart also highlights the currently playing bar. In itself a great tool if you want to record your own tracks now over top of this. So you can now mix the tracks, add effects, or anything you like. And as with all real tracks and real drums, these are real instruments played by real musicians. These are not individually sampled notes. These are actual performances by some of the top studio musicians in the world, able to play over any chord progression in any key you enter. This particular style has a bass part by Alex Al, one of the most sought after bass players in LA. And on guitar is Bob Lanzetti. Baritone guitar, Mark Lettieri. And drummer Sput Searight, all of whom are a major part of the New York funk and fusion scene. I'll do a few similar but quicker examples like this with a few different styles so you can get a sense of the scope of what you can do with the Band in a Box plugin. Here I'm typing in some chords like I did before, but this time I'll pick a hard rock style. I'll set the tempo and generate the tracks. And now I'm dragging them in. And I've got some great hard rock tracks in my project. Here I'm typing in some chords. Now I'm picking a bluegrass style and generating the tracks. Now dragging them in. 
and I've got some great bluegrass tracks in my project. In addition to actually typing in the chords, you can also just open actual Band in a Box files. Either files you've created right in the Band in a Box app, or files other people have sent you, or even the demos that come with Band in a Box. I'm going to open a Band in a Box song file that features a country style that includes a soloist by the amazing Nashville legend Johnny Highland. So we now have the entire thing entered for us, the chord progression, key, form, etc. So I'll just generate the tracks. Now I'll drag them in, and here's a great country style with Johnny Highland soloing over the changes. And of course, in addition to opening Band in a Box files, you can also save anything you enter here as a Band in a Box file as well. I'll do the same file open thing to check out the demo for a Samba Brazil style loading a song that features a style with the legendary Alex Acuna on drums, as well as the amazing Ramon Stagnaro on guitar. I'll generate, drag the tracks in, and here it's playing. So now we'll look a little bit at the installation, setup, and actually getting started with the plugin. The plugin works by accessing your Band in a Box folder, and particularly the real tracks, real drums, and other content within the Band in a Box folder. As such, the plugin is installed during the installation of Band in a Box. It can also be installed with patch updates for Band in a Box. In either case, during the Band in a Box installation, you'll reach the part where the plugin is actually installed. For the majority of users, simply going with the defaults within the installation will be exactly what you want to do. Nevertheless, I'll go through the steps here and explain what's going on. Here it shows the different plugin types that are being installed. The VST3 plugin is the one we're particularly concerned with in this video. There's also a VST2 plugin that gets installed and an AAX version of the plugin, which is specific to Pro Tools. If you don't want to bother installing the VST2 plugin and you don't have Pro Tools installed and don't think you will in the future, you can just deselect them. However, there's certainly no harm in just leaving them and going with a default, and they don't take up a lot of room, so it's entirely up to you. If you're running an older version of Cakewalk, it may very well not support VST3, and so it's possible that VST2 might be the best option in that case. Actually, by default, the newest version of Cakewalk won't even show a VST2 plugin if it detects a related VST3 version of the same plugin, so you likely won't even see it in Cakewalk. Here it shows you exactly where on your computer the plugins will be installed. The Band in a Box folder by default is CBB, but doesn't have to be. But this does need to be the location where you actually installed Band in a Box earlier. If you installed Band in a Box on a different drive, for example E in the first part of the setup, this would show up as E here as well. So there should be no reason why you would change this. And as for the location of the plugins, again for Cakewalk we're only concerned with the VST3 plugin. VST3 plugins need to go in this location, so again, there should be no need for you to change that. And again, even if you're not using the VST2 or AAX plugins, it shows you here where they're going. This part of the installation is just related to VST2 and different locations where the VST2 plugin will be duplicated. Since we're not concerning ourselves with the VST2 plugin, this part of the installation isn't important. Again, the plugin doesn't take up a lot of space, so it's fine to leave these or remove the checkboxes, whichever you'd prefer. And that's it for the installation. Once that's installed, when you go to add a plugin, it should just automatically appear as an option in Cakewalk, as we saw earlier, by right clicking in the tracks area, selecting Insert Instrument, and picking the Band in a Box plugin. If you've installed it and it doesn't show up, here are a few things you can look at. Go to Edit Preferences and VST Settings. The VST Scan Paths should have C Program Files Common Files VST3. If it doesn't, you should go to Add and add that path. You can also double check to make sure that location actually has the plugin. If it doesn't, you can try installing the plugin again. 
and then once added, if it's still not there, you could try pressing scan. As I mentioned earlier, this setting hides the VST2 plugin if you installed that. Now let's load up that plugin again and check out some of the settings within the plugin. The host is automatically set for certain DAWs, which optimizes some of the settings for that DAW, but it's not relevant here. There's no reason to change this and auto is always the best option to leave it at. Clear renders will clear all of the audio files that are currently saved in the Band in a Box folder, which is C, BB, BB plugin, save tracks, and then subfolders within that. By default, Cakewalk copies files to its own folders when you drag into Cakewalk projects. So this is likely safe to do, which can free up hard drive space if needed. But it's definitely always good to be aware of where audio files that you're using reside. If you're nervous about deleting audio, by all means, you can just leave that alone. This area is taken from the installation where we specified the band in a box location, in our case, leaving it as the default location. There's likely not a reason this would need to be changed, but if it were pointing to an incorrect folder, it would appear red like this. You could set the correct folders with these select buttons, or likely pressing find folders would set it correctly automatically. Some other settings you can look at are the audio settings, particularly in playback and recording. If you're finding you're not hearing the audition samples audio, for example when you're sampling styles in the style picker, you can have a look at the settings here and see if changing exclusive to shared helps with that problem. So now I'm going to get into a bit more of some advanced uses of the Band in a Box plugin. What I'm going to do is create some blues tracks. To start with, it will be just like the other examples we saw earlier, but after those tracks are made, then I'm going to start adding more tracks, which will include some MIDI, maybe a loop, and a solo that will use the multi-riff feature. So here I'm typing in a straight ahead blues in E. E7, A7, E7, A7, E7, B7, A7, E7. And I'll have it repeat six times. And like before, now I'll load a style. And I know we've just added new styles that feature Blues Guitar Whiz Saul Philcox. So I'm going to show all styles that have Saul Philcox playing on them. And I'll also sort by date, so the newest ones will be at the top of that list. I'll sample a few. And those were all cool, but I really like this messing around funky blues, so I'll pick that. I'll generate the tracks, and I'll drag them in, and let's listen a bit. Now you'll notice in the plugin there are the green and blue squares for the audio. On the other side there are also yellow squares with a little eighth note in them. This means that for these tracks there is also MIDI available. For the guitars and basses this is mostly just useful for notation, but for the piano this could actually be very useful right in this project. Cakewalk has some really cool instrument options built right in. So I'm going to add a new instrument. this electric piano. And I'm going to drag the piano MIDI from the Band in a Box plugin onto that track. Now I'll play a little bit with that electric piano soloed and play with the settings to get a cool sound for this song.
to try and see if I can add a bit of a modern flavor to this with a loop. Maybe I can find a hip hop loop that will work. Like everything else in Band in a Box, when trying to find the right instrument and part, just double click to sample. And this one might be really cool. So now I'll generate just that loop. I'll drag it in. And that sounds pretty cool. So now maybe I want a guitar solo for the first 12 bars. So there are lots of guitar solo options available in the Real Tracks Picker, and we could add one, but I want even more options available to me. So I'm going to use the multi-riff feature to generate seven different tracks of the same guitar soloist. So I can then comp together a single solo by combining all seven. Now we have Saul Philcox playing that rhythm guitar, but I'd like to also have him playing the solo. And I can double click to sample like before. So this one is the perfect tempo and groove to match the styles we already picked. So that'll be perfect. I'll also take just a moment to show you how the different tracks are laid out within the plugin. Now that we have tracks of various types loaded in the song. There are three main sections accessible with this scroll wheel. On top we have the style tracks. That is all of the tracks that are specifically loaded with that Messin style. Then in the middle we have the special tracks, and we have that one special loops track. Additional individually picked real tracks, real drums, etc. would go here as well. And then the bottom section is the multi-riff, which is what we just picked. And now I'll generate the multi-riffs. And I'll drag them in. So now we have seven of the same soloist, but playing different parts on all seven of those tracks. If we tried to play them together, that would sound pretty bad. But the idea is that we can listen to them individually and either pick the one we like the best, or even better, piece together phrases from each of them. So I'll listen to the first track. Now the second. Now the third. I think I like the way the first one started, just up to bar three. And then it could use a bit of silence. I like this whole portion from the fourth track. And now I want something else for the end. Mm, 
not quite that. And I think the end of the third track is what I want. So I'll check out the whole thing I did now. So everything we've done so far has been using the plugin basically to start off various brand new projects. And then the idea of course is that you can record your own vocals, other instruments, whatever you like over top of those tracks. But you can also use the plugin to add tracks to something you've already started on your own. I have a cakewalk project here where I've recorded a simple basic acoustic guitar track and then we have some beautiful vocals recorded over top of that. These vocals are great, but I'd like to replace the scratch guitar with a nicer, fuller sounding band. So I'll add the plug in. I'll enter the chords that are being played on the guitar. C, E minor, F. It's an interesting form. It's a nine bar form with four bar instrumental breaks in between. And that's repeated five times. So now I'll pick a style. And I'll see if I can find a cool Americana style. Oh, Shenandoah is an old American folk song, so an Americana style would be perfect. This is nice, but probably too slow. You don't have to find styles that are exactly the same tempo as what you want or need. But if it's close, you'll get better results. And this one would be fun to try. And I'll mute the original scratch guitar. And this now sounds great. And you could experiment with different genres. For example, here I jazzed up the chords a bit and turned it into a jazz ballad with Ron Carter playing bass and Kenny Barron on piano. Here I picked a stripped down mandola and five string fiddle style. You can see the possibilities with this amazing plugin are endless. Thanks very much for watching and have fun!